Let me start. Uh, I'm not sure Sean join us or not. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to uh, explain about the integration of the UEMA components into CTEX. So I'm Siam Basgar from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. And so uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to explain a bit about the, our uh, task that we are doing and uh, which components it was necessary for our task and then I'll go in the details. So uh, the, the tools that we wanted to develop, it was uh, interoperable text mining systems that to assist in the process of extraction relevant information from hospital search reports of the patients diagnosed with the stroke. Gradually improve the, and we wanted to gradually improve the quality of the transforming narrative discharge report into a structured clinical data uh, representations and generating good practice recommendations. So for this reason, we uh, select the CTEX because it was extraction, uh, it has for the exact information from the electric medical records. And it was based on the UEMA uh, that Sean explained us. Uh, and also it, it was, it is fully customized, customized pipeline to use any Apache UEMA uh, compatible component. And uh, it was uh, in, in base of the Java. And it has uh, several components clinical domain, but mostly for the English. But for our case, it was uh, the clinical report that was working, it was the Spanish language. So we need some components uh, that uh, help us for the, this task, for the tokenizing and uh, the detected times and so on. So uh, the component that we, uh, we wanted to use for our uh, case, it was the furrowings, header time, and the, some uh, fast, uh, uh, sorry, fuzzy uh, dictionary lookup. I wrote it by mistake here. And also one method from, uh, uh, that it was Brad uh, Writer. Uh, so I will explain all of this component uh, uh, by details and how, what was the, the problem of this component and how I integrated them into the CTEX. So first, uh, the Firwings is this uh, a C++ library uh, that providing language analyzing uh, functionalities such as the uh, morphologies analysis, uh, tokenizing, post tagging, semantic role labeling, and so, uh, so on for a, a, a variety of the languages such as English, Spanish, Portuguese, and so on. Around two years ago, Ring was integrated into UEMA using a wrapper and it, uh, it was tokenized uh, for, for Furings that it was developed, uh, developed uh, during an open-minded project for our unit. And, uh, but the problem for the Furings, it was that it split some Spanish words into two tokens. For example, if we, have, we had the L, it was tokenized in the A and L, and the same for the desk, that it was in the separate in desk and K. Another issue was a rating uh, to, uh, for uh, abbreviations words. Some medical words are, for our case, was very similar with the abbreviations word when they uh, appear at the end of the sentence with the dot that it was the punctuation, punctuation character. For example, for the MRS that is related to M ranking trivia, it is uh, ranking variables. And also for the D and the I that they are related to a uh, rationalization category. But in, for example, I in the catalog is means and. So uh, when the, we have the dot, uh, the Turing's tokenizer, doesn't tokenize uh, separately dot and uh, these words. So the uh, so for solve this problem first, we uh, apply the Furings tokenizer 
for all of involved components. Uh, so that I'll be explaining uh, in the next slides. Uh, so for each component that we wanted tokenized, we applied the Phoenix instead of the using the CTEX uh, uh, tokenizer. And another problem, it was the interoperability challenge that the Freerings or other comp uh, UEMA components, usually they have their type systems. For example, Freerings Rapid use the DK Pro type system, uh, but the CTEX has uh, its uh, uh, type systems. And um, so I'll be explaining later about this topic, uh, how we solve this problem. And another component is the header time that is a multilingual domain sensitive uh, temporal tagger that extracts temporal expressions from the document and normalize them according to the time next three. And header time generate the resource manually for 13 languages. To use this component in our tool, uh, we adapted its, uh, its Spanish grammar to the medical domain of the cross domain grammar. The adapted grammar can be used to detect a temporal expression in real clinical data in Spanish. And uh, another example problem, it was the same. Uh, so it, uh, you hated on use its uh, type systems, but we wanted to somehow solve this problem. Uh, so here is example of the header terms output. Yeah, if you can see is the uh, is uh, a Spanish date that we uh, tag it and also we normalize it to some specific uh, that we put it in the notes here. Is the Brad uh, format of the uh, output of the header time and. Uh, for the also uh, for the fuzzy dictionary uh, lookup. Uh, it is based on the fast dictionary lookup of the CTEX, but the problem of the, of the fast dictionary lookup of, of CTEX is very, it was very really strict to finding the match was, uh, words in the dictionary and, or lexicons. So therefore, if the input of the electrical health reports, we have to typo and miss uh, spelling that is very really, uh, rigorous and, uh, in the reports by the doctors, so fast dictionary lookup component couldn't detect these tokens. For this reason, we decided to modify fast dictionary lookup component and integrate it with the SNOMNET spell checker that is using Lucini similarity and it is very flexible in detecting uh, this type of that is very usual in medical and clinical domains. And that, uh, so we call this new component a uh, fuzzy dictionary lookup. And also this uh, fuzzy dictionary lookup normalize uh, this information. Uh, I will explain later in this slide. So it's like the same as the, the original fast uh, dictionary lookup in the CTEX. Uh, we need a input uh, dictionary files that includes all of the words that we want to detect. Uh, in the in the this file we have the three columns uh, that in the first column we have the SNOMNET code and uh, archetype and also the variance. So, but it's clear that one article uh, archetype can be have uh, have uh, has a several variants. Here I will explain a bit how uh, this fuzzy dictionary uh, lookup works. So as I said in the previous part, so we have the some files of the variables that we want to detect. Here in the medical dictionary, we have all of the this uh, sentence or a short phrase or words that we wanted to take. And uh, so first, uh, I will uh, apply the preprocessing step, and uh, for two files that the expert checker needs uh, needed. So one is the, for the SPL checker lexicon and another one uh, is the SPL checker dictionary. For the first one, I applied the lower case and also I removed the accent, uh, accent from the files. And also we have only the unique words. And if the, the, the length of the word is the only one, I keep the original one. As you can see here, we have the I in the capital of a case. But the rest is the lower case. And yeah, I apply the same uh, pre-processing step in for the dictionary one for the spell checker. 
And also for the uh, fuzzy uh, dictionary lookup, uh, so we have the map. So we have the, so it's the map. So we have the first word and after for the, the as the key and the value, it is the complete uh, 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 phrase that you want to detect. So here we have the input. So it's the medical report input that is the lesion organ uh, Dion, but it has the typo and uh, it doesn't have the accent, uh, accent and so on. But we want to detect uh, it is we have this word or similar this word in the our dictionary or not. So first uh, again we uh, uh, apply the preposition step to remove the accent and uh, uh, convert them to lower case. So for the first step, I uh, find the, the for the first word I'm looking for the R special check uh, for our lexicon, and I apply the accuracy of seventy percent to see uh, can we detect or this word or similar word of the this word in our special check lexicon that the accuracy of the seventy percent because only it is only one word. And it can have the, a lot of the typos, so I put the accuracy of 70%. And if you can see, we have the polar of the this word resumeness. So first step is done. So the next step, I will replace the first word with the correct one, the soonest organic Dion, but I will look at the, the two, uh, yeah, is I replace the first one. And the, the second step is uh, is uh, also, also uh, we keep the the uh, the value of the this uh, key in the R dictionary map. So uh, in the dictionary uh, map, also we have the listeners, and also uh, and also we keep the the correct value for the this key. That is listeners and organ Diana. But it can be, it, but maybe if you can have more and uh, more than one uh, uh, phrase, it can be. And this in the second uh, step is using the, this uh, modified input that, that is the resumeness organo dion uh, we we want to look it in the r uh, dictionary uh, files that the, for the spell checker and we apply the accuracy of 80 percent so with 80 percent accuracy we can find the resumeness in organo diana and then we check the output of the dictionary mapper and with the uh, output of the uh, SPS checker dictionary. If it is the same, so we tag uh, this uh, input as a uh, file that we're looking for that. Uh, so no is, uh, so I'm going to explain about the interoperability challenge that we have to address. Because as I said, different components have different type systems. So, uh, the, the, the one solution that uh, we were thinking about that in the first step, it was the, uh, the type mapper uh, from the NACTEM uh, uh, NCTU, that is the National Center for Text Mining in the England, in the England which is uh, capable of the transcribing um, or mapping from one type to another that can be uh, placed between non-interoperable uh, components. The, the type mapper component takes a user-defined mapping as a parameter. For example, for this example that you can see here, uh, for each annotations of the type com.example.person, uh, the component will create a corresponding annotations of the type org.example.named uh, entity. We tried to use this component, uh, component, component uh, but uh, we got several errors and it was not easy and simple as they mentioned in their website. Uh, so another solution, it was to, instead of using the NACTEM converting tab, we do it manually, but it leads to have a missing code. So another solution that we chose, it is writing a native type system of CTEX for the header time and free rings wrapper component that I will explain here. Uh, so, uh, uh, um, so it means that we added all necessary types in the header time and the decay prototype system that their equivalent were not in the CTEX uh, type systems. And of course, we followed the same format name of the types. For example, uh, in the uh, CTEX type system, we have org.space 
statistics, the type systems, and so on. In this example, you can see we added the, the type system in the, uh, for the type of the time mix three for, uh, from the header time, and we added into uh, the type system of the CTEX. And here we can see the example uh, that we, I added the dependency of the Fourier type system into the CTEX. And uh, here, as you can see, uh, in the original code of the free rings, the first one, first one uh, they imported token a type of the TK Pro type systems. To solve the problem and to be integrated with the CTEX type system, we imported uh, its equivalent into CTEX type systems uh, that uh, for the token was a word token. And we changed the rated variables. So in the first time, it was the token and then we rep uh, replace, replace it with the word token from the CTEX that we added, uh, it, that it was available in this uh, CTEX type systems. But for the this uh, code of the header terms, because we didn't have the uh, this type in the original uh, CTEX uh, type system, so we import we, uh, so we imported the, the type that we added uh, manually by ourselves, uh, and so for this uh, type of variables that we don't have the, in the original uh, type system, the CTEX uh, type system, we don't need to change the, the variables. So because it was the time x3, so we just change the, or add the new uh, import uh, library type system. And uh, uh, also uh, we have to change the palm. So if, uh, before the running the component is necessary to uh, add the, uh, uh, the uh, add the, this uh, new component as a module and also sh uh, show the dependency of the these components together and also if this we need some additional class pass we uh, as the dictionary for the dictionary uh, needs this and also the open open minded and also for the header time we have to add the resource in the additional uh, class pass elements. Uh, for the running the code, uh, so uh, we use the pipeline builder in the CTEX. Uh, it's the same as the, the other components. It should be the order, best of order. So we uh, use the add. And so we uh, added the, uh, for example, here is the filling wrapper. And also we have the, uh, several argument that is here is the language is the Spanish, yes. And also, do you want to apply dependency parsing or not? So we can put it the true and false. And uh, for the free rings, the second one is free rings that we have uh, another uh, parameters that here uh, we use the, again uh, using uh, Spanish language, but I said it has uh, free rings and uh, here they don't have several languages, so for several languages. And uh, so, <clears throat> Here we use the durations, date, and the time. They are true, the rest is uh, false. For the uh, fuzzy dictionary lookup, it's the same as the fast dictionary lookup. We have to address the dictionary description path. Uh, of course, we have to change it and address to uh, the false dictionary file that I mentioned. And the race is the same. And also for the, uh, is not component, but in, uh, it is uh, the method that I, we, we added. It is for the Pratt. So first one is SMI uh, output. That is the, it was, available, it was uh, provided with the CTEX. But the next one is the Pratt because we want to, to, to use the Pratt tools. So we use uh, this, uh, I wrote it, this method to save it in the Pratt format. And also for the right uh, in the HTML writer, also I changed it a bit because it doesn't support the header times. So I added this uh, uh, inform uh, this code. Uh, I added this information into uh, HTML code. And here is the example of the brat uh, that you can see here. I'm not sure it's clear or not, but anyway, it's the format of the brat of or output of the tools, and is the HTML that support the time, header time as well. And uh, the all of the source 
is available in the our GitHub uh, account repository, and uh, uh, I will uh, upload the, the update the readme in the next few days to how you can use this informations in components into the CTEX and usually compile the, the CTEX itself with these new components. And thank you so much for your uh, listening. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Uh, now how did you use the positive? Uh, so, uh, so the only change that I changed for the first edition the map is so as I say, the best of the the fast uh, dictionary lookup. The only things that I uh, changed it was after the a filterings tokenizer instead of the uh, tokenizer of the CTEX itself be integrated with the, the rest of the uh, component and. Uh, also, because it was uh, free street, so we want to be some uh, fuzzy to uh, apply a diff, uh, another uh, typo that it can happen in the text. Okay, can everyone hear me? <clears throat> this is Sean again. Hi, Sean. Okay, so I have a question. Uh, your Spell correct dictionary. How did you actually build it? How, where did you get the um, misspelled terms that you put into it? So I, I so as I said, I used the spell checker, uh, uh, spell checker. So we just added this library uh, in this project actually into the CTEX. And uh, as, I, as I explained in the, I don't know, you was in the meeting, so I explained how it works. So let me back to the slides. So here, uh, uh, I explained how we handle this uh, misspelling and type of by uh, SPL checker. Okay, great, thank you. <clears throat> Another question, I suppose. Heidel time, so if I remember correctly, it can handle both German and English expressions. Does it have a setting for Spanish or did you have to make some modifications for that? No, no. the only things that we changed for the Spanish, uh, it was for the, because we need to normalize at the, at the times. So the only, the most uh, change that we changed for the uh, header time to uh, have a, Normalized version of the of each of the this uh, uh, pattern, the pattern. So here, if you can, if you see here, so in, in the note we have normalized everything in the some specific format. So the, we change the the grammar to have this information. Also, the code of the or the grammar that we added in the header term is also is available in our GitHub repository. Okay, great. I'm sorry if you said these things and I missed them. I've been trying to uh, handle the chat both here and in the uh, main stage. So my apologies. No worries. And also this another question that CTEX has functionality to work with speech to text that I don't think so, but John. So it does not right now, basically um, for something like speech to text or uh, you know, uh, uh, grabbing PDF files or um, optical character recognition, you would have to use an external tool as a preprocessor and basically have that uh, create the regular plain text clinical note and CTEX would consume that. Or as Timothy Miller sums it up, nope.
Okay, I think we are 10 minutes to, until the next presentation. Uh, if there are any more questions, type them quickly. Uh, I was told, I suppose, that some people needed to leave the current session, go back into the sessions panel and reselect CTAs. Am I correct in that understanding? Yes. Okay. It looks like it. Uh, this is a strange platform. <laughs> it's the first time that anyone here has really used it. So I apologize if it's been confusing. Um, we are all kind of learning this as we go. So Are there any questions? I think each talk has each uh, session, so we have to change each session. So I think for the next one, we have to leave here and go to the next one. Right. Yes, I think we should all do that, whether it is required or not. Uh, better safe than sorry. Uh, for the performance, uh, I, uh, we tested, so I think it's fast enough, but uh, I didn't, I mean, I didn't test it for the performance, how it passed or how fast we, uh, the fast teaching it was, but it's really fast. Uh, and we, for our case, I didn't test it uh, for each to see how second it takes, or, uh, but it's very fast enough to handle the, uh, the problem at type and so on. And also for the uh, uh, the previous uh, question of the better uh, for the overlapping entities. So if we have, for our case, if we have two entities uh, that they have overlap for the two different type, so we select the both. But if uh, for our case, if we have the same uh, two different entity with the same type, we use the longest uh, type, longest span for the the entity. So we uh, choose only select that one if we understand correctly about the overlapping entity range that you ask. Okay. Will there be video chatting with audio about CTEX? Ah, okay, so I, I suppose this question about uh, having some video chat with audio about CTAKES, I would like to do that uh, perhaps at the end of every day or perhaps even just at the end of the uh, Apache conference itself on Thursday. I am going to have to think about it. Um, and also think about how we might be able to do it and get back to everyone on that. So uh, stay tuned. All right. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think we're at time. So CMAC, thank you very much. This was really neat. And uh, it's amazing to see CTAKES applied to another language besides English. And tomorrow also I will uh have a talk for the our project itself and going to details and how what was our corpora and what the challenge we have to address for our kids yeah. and we use this component as well yes i for one will be watching that sounds like fun. 
Okay, everyone. So again, uh, I think the best thing to do right now is to leave this session, uh, big red letters, upper right corner, and then try to re-enter whatever CTAKE's session happens to be running right now. Thank you so much for everybody. All right. Thanks, all. Okay. See you in a minute. Sure.